This is the discourse with the No, this you said that my point. Because I my Ready? Yeah, good afternoon. Um, this is a nice, uh, nice afternoon, cool afternoon we had here in Lagos. Um, how was the week? Uh, this is, I'm oh, sorry. I should, probably should have introduced myself to this this The discourse with you is a classic of 97.3. Okay, uh, today we are getting down to business very quickly because I don't think um, talking to my guest will take me the better part of three, four hours, so I have to squeeze everything in just one hour. Okay, but very quickly, uh, what happened during the week? Yes, we still have the issue of the missing girls. Um, we, there seems to be no respite in sight, in spite of all the demonstrations and so on and so forth. Of course, on the social media, there's been a few there are all kinds of things, uh, all kinds of things that have been going on in the social media, both the, the bit of the fun part and the bit of... And somebody actually commented yesterday and was saying that... Um, he, he, you know, he no, it was this morning actually, and he said he didn't know why some people found certain aspects of latest developments a bit funny and were making some humor out of it. And I and I tried to explain to him that um, the humor that you see on the social media, on actions by certain people, actually is a form of protest. Um, since they can't beat them, they can't slap them. Uh, they make a humor out of it that so that hopefully those who give us all these gaps and um, unexplainable behavior, you know, we will we'll learn a lesson from it. So that's why you do find the fun part of it. It's, it's, it's more or less like a kind of protest. You know, it's, it's, it's another manner of protest, just like you'd have a cartoon in the newspaper and you find you know, people that are okay. So that's, that's uh, we still have the issue of the girls at hand. Um, I have this nice paper that came in this morning. It's called The Niche on Sunday. And uh, that's the paper I have in front of me. And you know, they say that the CONFAB seeks extension and that they've written a letter to, to the president and they want an extension for the uh, national conference. Um, they're asking for an extension to July 31. Uh, every day, every week, we move closer and closer to the election. How we are going to resolve this national conference for the election, I really don't know. With the security challenges we have, I don't know what's going to happen. But we must have a change of government um, in 2015. Um, there must be a change of government. If it's the same government, that's going to continue fine. But we must have some form of election that will lead to a change of government. That seems to be cast in concrete. And then the, the, the niche also has an interview. Um, <laughs> uh, the <laughs> this is Ruti Miyamichi, um, who was in the PDP for years. He's now in the APC, and he says, the PDP encourages corruption. Right? Anybody should know, should know because he have been with them for quite a while. Okay, so let's go. Um, last week I had uh, Dear Bumi and um, I had said that this week I was going to have somebody who has some, a bit of a military, uh, no, not a piece, I'm sorry, 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 general, not a piece of general, who has experience in, 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 in these matters that are bothering our security and so on and so forth. And um, it was difficult for me to drag him down here. Um, getting him here was not easy. Yeah, first of all, he wouldn't come in my car because he said he doesn't like seat belts, and he refused to sit at the back and make me a driver. <laughs> well, finally, one way or the other, on my in the on the Marble vehicle, I was able to drag him down here. And it's it's always my pleasure to have, um, as always, in my company and to introduce to you. Brigadier General Alabi Isama. He retired, but he doesn't look any way retired at all. At all. General, how are you, sir? You're looking cool today. Hi, thank you. I'm very well. Yeah, you look, you look, you. You're looking very, very cool. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, yes. Okay. Um, now, those of you who are regular discussers, who belong to the discourse uh, group, would know that we had uh, General Isama here. I mean, it was about six, about many months ago? About six months ago. About, about six months ago. Um, about six months ago, yes. And uh, that was when you launched your book, uh, that book on the Civil War. That's right. Yes, and uh, I was at the, lo the launching. I couldn't, get, I couldn't get anywhere to go in, you know? It was a massive crowd. But have, have you seen your friend who was shot on the putox since then? <laughs> I know you're all interested in my friend that was shot on the putox. But have you come across him? Has no, you, no. You haven't? No. How's the book doing? 
Oh, it's, uh, it's the best seller now. Really? And um, we can't meet the demand. We're That's doing um, an international version of it. Uh, in fact, in Houston alone, there are 36,000 Nigerians there waiting for the book. We just can't make I, 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 I hope the government is listening. Somebody from Inland Revenue needs to visit General Revenue. Oh, yeah. Definitely, you're not living on your pension anymore. At 74, <laughs> if they still want tax, I paid. No, nobody's going to believe you at 74. I was just telling the, your son, who I went to school with, can you imagine that? I was just telling him that you don't look anywhere near 70. Whatever, whatever it is you've been eating, I, 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 I. But I think I remember you said during the Civil War, what was it you said you ate? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. Now let, let's let's get down down to brass tacks. By the way, has, has there been any development uh, in the book? That, that, you know that since you wrote the book, has there been any new development that you might just want us to know very quickly? Yeah. Well, um, thank you again. Uh, thank you, uh, listeners. A lot of people now know me because nobody had my name uh, during the Civil War. Nobody had my name during my Tessine. Nobody had my name mm. even in the army. But with that book, oh, I am a celebrity now. You better believe it. Yeah, I can't wait. And I have even it. become <laughs> the president of Izu Anioma. Have you ever heard what that is? Never heard of wow. it. Wow. That is the Anyocha people, Oshimeli people, Asasaba, Ibuzo, Ika people from Agbo, uh, Ndokwa people from uh, Kwale. Is that, is that, are, you the, are you like the king or something? No, no. I am uh, president general. Oh, okay. uh, it's uh, political, but uh, okay. we can't be indifferent to what happens. To what I, mean, I, thought, I thought maybe you were like some kind of king. I was going to visit your palace and no, see no, no, if yet. there were any nice princesses. There. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, General, I am sure that um, you've been following this Chibok thing, um, this Chibok uh, Boko Haram tragedy that we have on our hands. And um, now, first, I, you told me once that you were involved in bringing the Madison people down. Is that right, sir? Well, uh, that is true. Very okay. true. But uh, uh, let me start, Jimmy, by saying that uh, this situation is very unfortunate and I get emotional when I see mothers cry on television. Can you imagine mm -hmm. my mother crying? I, that, 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 I will level a place like that. Yeah. But, um, we have reached a stage where we have to be very careful. Okay. Uh, uh, if you pursue your enemy with wisdom, mm. which is what you must do, so that you do not enter the grave before him. I see. You, we have reached a stage where we have to take it easy. Mm -hmm. You cannot rush into it. We've gone past that now. Okay. Could, it, could, it, could that have been avoided? Though? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, no. What, what do you think went two, wrong? What since 2002, yes. these people said uh, they want Sharia. They, it's just like all the politicians looking for area boys. And they got these area boys together. And mm -hmm. they said, look, we will vote for you if you will do this and that. Mm -hmm. And the governor, well, the candidate then accepted he was going to do so. Mm -hmm. Then they had the first term, he didn't do so, he had the second term. He even had a commissioner amongst them. Mm. And then uh, they said, well, look, you haven't done what we agreed that we should that do. That you should do. Then they got their leader and killed their leader, mm. who was Yusuf. Ah. Then the father-in-law of this gentleman went there and said, wait, why you kill my Pekin? Then that one too was killed. Now, you see, Killing is so easy in our country. Yes. Do you know why Mandela was not killed? They were not silly. Mm -hmm. That was the bargaining chip. If the apartheid government was losing, then they would bring him out of jail. If they were winning, they would let him rot in there. They but had they a reason kill for killing. They had a reason for keeping him there. The same thing is Jerry Adams of Sinn Féin. Yes. They kept him. They didn't kill him. Even when he was arrested um, or invited, rather, That's right. by a mother case, they let him go. Yeah, of course. So the same thing was Jomo Kenyatta. You don't just kill these people. If they had kept Yusuf by now in jail, then Yusuf will come out as the bargaining chip. Tell your people to stop, and this is what will happen. But we didn't do all that. 
Anyway, uh, that we've gone past that now, and we're now in a very, very serious situation. Yoruba will say, Tokun Shokutuebadi, Suru Luma Afitu. And that is the point I said, pursue your enemy with wisdom so that you do not enter the grave before him. If you chase them for too long and too fast, hmm. you probably will even not find the girls anymore. By, by now, many of the girls will have been pregnant. Hmm. Many of the girls will have been dead. We are praying that we are able to bring them back. Hmm. We have made a lot of mistakes. But I want you to remember this point that Boko Haram did not start with uh, President Jonathan. Okay. He didn't start it. You see, it's a decay infras uh, infrastructure, okay. insecurity. In 1978, the military government don't let me start mentioning name now because we will come back to the same point of being shot in the bottom. <laughs> in 1978, okay. yes. the military government disbanded the E branch of the police. I see. We have to improve on our relationship with the police. We must develop the Nigerian police for internal security. Hmm. Uh, Yomi Onoshile, for instance who was the commissioner of police, set up laboratory. Where are these laboratories today? I don't know whether you can even have a fingerprint machine in the police. We need to improve on our internal security through the police, not the army. Mm, why, why, why is that? Uh, because, because in every village in this country, there is a police post. And okay. they know the people. By the time we finish this discussion, you will know why it is going to be necessary to have a state police, which everybody is talking, uh, the North agreed, the South did not agree, and the North, all this situation. People are playing politics at this time in the midst of collective suffering. Mm. And we're having name callings. We're running out, uh, uh, you see, the way we are handling it is not the right thing to my mind. In this country, we should all now come together. Whether you are PDP or the opposition or whoever you are, you don't have to like Jonathan. He is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria today as sworn in. Yeah, that is true. Whether we like it or not, he is carrying our national flag. And that person should not be ashamed. We should work with him to achieve results. But what if he doesn't want to work with us? No, no. We need to I'm work saying, with him. I'm just saying. This man cannot do it alone. He has advisors. Do you think, do you think, now that you mentioned advisors, do you think he's getting very good tactical advice? Well, what again. you would call tactical, because def definitely he has his limitations, given He's like every human being, like every human being, yes. he's not a military person. No, uh, he hasn't really uh, been in government, and so but so he has his limitations. Okay, but do you think he's getting real good, solid tactical advice? Well, look, let me just talk about the my Tessine. Okay, because situations are not the same. Okay, uh, thirty-eight years ago, mm. uh, nineteen seventy-six and uh, uh, two thousand and fifteen, not the same. Mm. Weapons. Have become more sophisticated. You have some of them who are retired soldiers in the Boko Haram, they know how to use weapons. I see. Okay. At that time, maybe not many of them, but the demands are usually the same. The area is the same. Uh, some bits of forest. I was there. Some few hungry lions and snakes and uh, hungry monkey jumping around the whole place, but it's a large area like an oasis, you have Guazo there, Patawe. I know the villages in the whole area there. Hmm. But what we did, we didn't use any weapons. Hmm. And we were able to complete the job. When you say you, that means... The, the army, Niger the Nigerian Niger army. At that time? At that time, my, uh, I asked permission from uh, 
General Danjuma, who was the chief of army, to say that this thing will get out of hand if we fail to nip it in the bud right now. Hmm. He gave me 30 days to go there, and by the grace of God, within 15 days, we had finished with my tesine. How did that happen? Did you fire a shot, or was it negotiation? We did not fire any shot. I have the pictures in one of the television stations, which will uh, be aired today at 6 p.m. We did not fire any shot. You don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. Hmm. These are Nigerians. Hmm. These are Nigerians. The bullets, you know, since I was born, Nigeria has not fired a shot against an enemy of the country, except our own people. The Civil War, yes. all the wet all yes. the, all the, all the, the riots, riots and everything. These are Nigerians and taxpayers. So handling the situation before it will get out of hand, will be more important. And what was my aim? My aim was not to go and kill them. My aim was to stop them from killing our own people. So it is your aim that will dictate the strategy to apply and the did, tactics. Did, did, did you have to pay like a ransom or something? No, we did didn't pay ransom. ransom. What the first thing we did was to get the intelligence from the police. And I keep using ah. the word police. They are in every village in this country. In some villages where they don't have an outpost, they have what is called a station officer, an SO. They are everywhere and they have their radio stations. They have, they have their telecommunication system, which needed to be improved on. And we got the uh, intelligence report. From the intelligence report, many of our soldiers didn't know the place. I, was, I went there for the first time. I know everywhere in that place, from Gapa to Jige, to Warabe, to Ngosha, to Ngala, to Chibok itself, up to the border. Hmm. We, have, we still have borders with Cameroon, borders with Chad, border with Niger, and all the houses speaking areas of Northwest Africa. Hmm. But General, let me ask you, I'm getting a sense here, and I'd like you to correct it, to rather I, you know, to accede to what I'm thinking or correct me if I'm wrong. Are you saying that the best approach is to negotiate with these people? No, oh, that, that is past now. Oh, we are past that In now. those, uh, when it started, I told oh, you, okay. 2002, I see. I see. Okay. it was not, after all, there was a demand. Yes. And the governor accepted the demand. But mm -hmm. he didn't perform. And so it, there was a problem. And when they rioted, they were killed. And mm -hmm. then they went and attacked the police station. From attacking the police station, that was when they opened fire on their leaders. Look, let me give myself as the example on this issue. Yeah. My father was from Delta, my mother okay. from Eloni. Okay. I was four years old when my father died, so my mother took me to Eloni. Mm -hmm. I grew up as an Eloni boy with her uncle called Alabi Kanike, who was the Ubandawa Kizango of Eloni. Well, every morning he would give us money to go and buy food, lunch, dinner. And that went on for a few years. We were about 20 children in the house. We had no job. He would give us the money. The wife was selling the food. When the man died... Oh, the wife, he would give us the money, but the wife was selling the food. Yes, but when the man died, <laughs> okay. nobody to give us food. Nobody to give us the money. And so the older ones amongst us we became robbers somewhere, and little ones like me would just carry a little pan and sit outside as a beggar. Hmm. And somebody will put some few coins, coins in, uh, in it, yeah. uh, and then we will go and buy rogo, which was cassava and granite, and that was the food for the day. You see, what I'm saying here is that it was a feudal system. Hmm. At that time, anybody could have taken these older ones amongst us and say, go and kill well, that yeah, person. Yeah. Here you are with yeah, five yeah. naira or with 20 naira. Hmm. During the Civil War, many of these house speaking uh, people of the uh, of, of northern part of West Africa came down to Nigeria to help in the war effort. Remember, the war at that time was Hausa versus Igbo. Hmm. So when you people were quarrelling with uh, uh, Lamido Adamawa, you should have allowed him to speak. These same people. When he spoke about the Cameroon 
Uh, that, that yeah. they are from Cameroon. Cameroon they, uh, oh, they have a place it, to those go. Those people came from Cameroon to. Oh, of course. Yeah. Now, a lot of people who are outside speaking. Are he uh, the the uh, president of Cameroon at that time? Are you? His mother was from that area. Hmm. That was Kumba North, which the British gave to the North to increase their population, and that became Sadana Province, which is today Adamawa. I and see. the and the uh, uh, the Kumba South, which was the Victoria West, was the uh, Bakasi, which the British removed from Nigeria to reduce the population in the South. Ah. So all these are interconnected. For instance, how will anybody just pick up some few girls and cross the border? It's because he has a place to go to. Exactly. Yeah. You people didn't allow this man to talk. Now, there are so many things that are interconnected. In this particular in tragedy. The, okay. So what we did at that time was to, first of all, go and close the border. We had external affairs people. We had ministry of uh, information people. We had immigration people. So close the border. And then the uh, Lake Chad was drying up. The whole place, as of today, I think, is dried up. Hmm. And uh, you had this problem of uh, climate change. There are no vegetations. So the fishermen among them had no job. The uh, uh, farmers among them had no rain. And they have problems. Hmm. And because of those things, people have no job. And anybody yeah, easy, 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 you know, yes. easy. Um, and then you had the, you, the, the, the <coughs> Arab Springs. So a lot of weapons had, uh, had gone into. Okay, uh, you, you reckon that some of the weapons they're using probably came of from course the, the Of course, that over would there. happen. Okay, uh, we, we, we'll, we'll just take a, we'll take a short break, uh, General, so you can freshen up. If you want to be part of the program, you can call 0909-217-2973 or 0, 070 sorry zero seven zero eight seven six five six zero three zero and you can tweet at classic fm 973 or you can send in a text at three three nine seven three so general what um let me lighten you up a little bit what kind of music would you like to listen to why are you smiling go ahead what you haven't told that you haven't told that what you want anyone you like anyone she likes anyone I need you. General, I, I, hope you I told you when I need <laughs> when I need you. Why you need who? Uh, whatever. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the general is, is seventy four. This is the granddaughter of my very best friend. I know. I know. Okay. I know. I know. Just teasing. Just teasing. She knows that. Okay. So we we'll play. We we'll play when I need you. Is that right? You got the floor. Yeah. Do you have it? Okay. We we'll take a short break and then we'll be right back. Beautiful day. Unfortunately, one 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 hour. How did I do it? You know why we are playing that music? You can see the whole world loving Nigeria. Do you believe that? Yeah, you're back to the discourse with GVD, so um, I still have with me Brigadier General Alabi Sama, retired but not tired uh, in, in the studios. Okay, now uh, I think we have a caller, um, Flo, I think we have a caller, let's see if we can do that. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, you're welcome to the discourse. Who's calling, please? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, I can hear you. Who's calling? My name is Napoleon. Napoleon, good afternoon, Napoleon. Very quickly, can we get your... Thank you, my brother. Hey, there. Where can we find your book? I can find your book, the book you launched uh, recently. Um, I so think... You, you want to run the commercial, General? Uh, uh, they're, co they're completely run out now, and we're printing <laughs> an, uh, another uh, uh, set of uh, copies. And I think by June, July, we should have them in all the bookshops and on uh, eBay and uh, Amazon, by the grace of God. Okay, thank you. That is by the way. Um, ah, no, you, I know you can't ask two questions. We don't have enough time. 
There is one question per person. Sorry, the lines are jammed. Can they record somebody like General? Can they record you? Uh, That's a good question. Though. Yes, thank you for that question. Can okay, they I'll allow you. You mean you said now retired but not tired? Yeah, okay. Soldier, it's already a soldier. Oh, okay, we go ahead. You said you said in America, the other one is You forgot that man must work. But okay. Okay, you you. you, you Okay, we've well, made a point. Buhari knows all the parents. Once upon a time, Buhari has already marched himself in the situation along that uh, child area. And he was in the child of Cameroon, he was recalled back. These people are just waiting like that. And we keep on going to call America. That is my I only time is not for me. I would have really asked no. a lot of questions. Oh, okay, no, we can call America. <laughs> he, has, he has loads of questions for you. But he's, he has made a very valid point. Yeah. Though we would have gotten to it at some point, we might as well just take it now. Yeah. Now, let, let me start from, let me lay a foundation before we go to his comment. Do you think our military are capable, strategically, tact tactically, and uh, in terms of motivation, are they cap uh, is our military capable, would they have been capable of bringing this crisis to an end? Yeah, uh, um, yeah. You, you reckon? I, yes, I reckon. Yes, yes. They are well I hope trained. this is not an issue but of... But I think I hope, we have all been I hope this is not a, this is not an issue of loyalty, General. No, 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 no loyalty. I think we have just all been politicized. For instance, bringing the foreign troops in, yes. they want to go back home quickly. They want to finish and go home. And they don't want to die here. But, but the more, the longer it is, it's like slave trade. Uh, the source of profit, you want it to go away and you want the slave trade to to just stop like that. A lot of people are making money from uh, a security votes which, on which, this issue. Which people do you think are making money? Oh, the whole country. The whole country. The, for instance, the government of uh, uh, Borno State is buying uh, vehicles for the military. They said any soldier that is dead, the family gets one, one million, and uh, they said they, they've been giving them a lot of uh, support. Oh, yeah. A lot of money is changing hands for security. Mm. The food, the troops are eating. So many things are happening. And but, uh, but, but, but you know there's been some complaints. I, I, I don't know. I haven't been to the war front. Yeah. But there's been some complaints that, and even the governor said it, yeah. that it appears as if our military boys are not well motivated. What do you, what do you, well, what do you think so? For motivation, yes. these are paid soldiers. What does it take to motivate a soldier to send him to war? Giving his proper allowances. Yes. Commend him when he's done well or not. When he has not done well, then say so and let him know so that he can improve on that. Okay. And I think soldiers. Feed him properly. It's, it's not. It's not difficult to motivate a soldier. You will be there yourself as a commander, and my troops will follow me anywhere. Oh, you will need to see these pictures that are going to be shown on the television today in one of our televisions in in this country at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not a difficult issue. This is not a... Look, the situation is like a termite strategy. You abandon a table somewhere in the house, and one day you now realize that you need this table, and you look at the top, and you found a termite on top of the table. Mm. You just have to look under. The, the, the rot is evident. The mm. rot under there is what we have now. When we don't have a proper police intelligence mm -hmm. and that they took these children away and you, you, you couldn't even check what the, the tire mark of the vehicle mm -hmm. that is something oh, the tire, yes, and you I don't even know ah. okay good, sorry we have another caller um, people, the, the lines are just jammed let's see this will come through hello good afternoon this is the discuss hello good afternoon good, good afternoon sir my name is Gingar Taylor good afternoon good afternoon Gingar how, how are you how are you doing good afternoon I'm very quickly please Okay, okay. You, you can see wisdom talking, you can see age, you can see experience, mm -hmm. you can see the travelized Nigeria talking. Mm -hmm. I wish the like of, I don't want to call this, but I wish the like of, I mean, Clark, to take, I mean, credence from this, in the fellowship. We mm -hmm. don't want to But the first time in the same time, I'm having sympathy towards, I mean, the president. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, for the first time, hearing the general speak and, and, and being sympathetic to his cause, mm -hmm. you understand? Okay. But the, truth, but the truth has to be told, our president has not been just proactive in dealing with this issue. Okay. And the way, the, way the, the way general actually captures it, you can, you can see somebody is 
Which lawyer and at the same time front and you understand? Yes. But we needed we needed the president who is proactive. You understand? Mm -hmm. We are not really calling for his head. We are saying somebody should please act. Yeah, he said he said don't bring the girls here. <laughs> no, go on, just go on, just go on. Yes. Yes, so that's good. You understand? Mm -hmm. Like like the other one like said, sir, how do we get your book? Then number two. I don't know if they will allow you to mention that TV station, you understand? No, 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 we don't want commercials here. Don't, 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 do that, don't do that trick on me. <laughs> don't worry, I'll treat it, I'll treat it, I'll treat it, I'll treat it to you, so all of you will see. Oh, thank you very much. My Twitter I, handle I is at Jimmy Disso, so you can treat it. I want the general to tell us, I mean, if, because unfortunately the president has surrounded himself with, with people that are that 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 are so to say. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. I want the general so that it should be on record and when two thousand and fifteen comes around and this will be part of the things that we use as our voting I mean as a decision. What what basic strategy can be taken at this at this stage? Especially that the places that you have mentioned are part. You know, the electricity has been running and Okay, all right. Benga, you've taken you 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 are doing another discourse on your own. Okay, I will treat I will treat I'll treat the station that um, the general will be at six o'clock. So go go to my Twitter handle at GBDC, you'll find it and I'll put it on my Facebook page. So that's that's how it goes. Now, General, do you do you agree that the president hasn't been proactive in this instance? Is it the you, you, no, no, wait, wait, wait. I mean, you, you know, it took it took about two, three weeks before. It, it appears as if in the first instance, he didn't even believe that the girls were missing. Oh, my dear audience, I think I need to mention this point one more time. Yes. The problem has nothing to do with the president except that he is not getting the proper report from the field. Okay. The president is supposed to be briefed. You have a chief of defense staff who says the job will be finished by April. Yes. We are now in May. It's not finished. Well, the army will be discredited if we continue to do that. The armed forces said, oh, we have re rescued a hundred of these girls. And then you came back and said we did it. The army will be discredited uh, on this issue. It, it was like uh, annulment of election. Uh, uh, the, 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 in June 12th. Now, the military has been discredited in politics. You are now trying to discredit them, and that is why the people are now doubting their ability. Mm -hmm. We don't talk too much throughout the civil war. Did you hear of any Alabi Sama? You heard no. of Adekula, you probably heard of a passenger. Mm -hmm. Did you heard of Alabi Sama? No. But my book has shown you. But it was said that Baba Sajo ended the war. I mean. Well, yes, because he was commander. If you are and uh, head of state and, and Nigeria. Currently. If, the, if Nigeria will win the World Cup, and uh, uh, after his, uh, during the time of uh, uh, Good Luck Jonathan. And so he won the World Cup. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, that's a different issue. But okay, yes. look, the point is if you have 200 and that, uh, at that time, 274 girls. Uh, before uh, some of them came back, marching in single file at 10 feet apart, that's about seven football field. Ah, are you saying with the population that is supposed to be in the north, nobody saw them, nobody will say this is where they passed, and if it was by vehicle, what type of vehicle, we didn't see all these things. The mm. problem we have is becoming north versus south. Ah, take for instance, uh, I think they had a discussion on derivation or something, and uh, the uh, uh, Delta, Niger Delta said, oh, we will want 50%. First of all, they shot themselves on the foot. They should ask for 100%. And yeah. then uh, they now say, no, it's 5%. But you see, the good thing about it is that there is an LCM. The bottom fact factor there is that they all agree somebody must be compensated. So they now said 5%. But I am saying that if you tie a road for one million in the north from Ilori mm. up to Sokoto, Kaduna, Maigeteri, everywhere in the north, any road you tie for one million, you, it will cost you more than a hundred million to tie it in the south. Why? Why? In, in, in the Niger Delta, because everywhere is a creek. The soil test, the creeks and the uh, bridges you are going to build, for instance, from uh, uh, Ilori to Sokoto, you can build a straight line if you want. A straight road from Ilori to, to Sokoto. But again, can you build a 10 miles road in the Niger Delta that is a straight line? It's not possible. Mm. Uh, people need to understand this thing. And 
when you have a, a, a debate, mm -hmm. when you have a debate in the House, and people are able to talk more sensibly, you will begin to see why. It's not a matter of North versus South. We're talking of Nigeria. And in fact, if the ethnic nationalities had gone there, mm. nobody would have come and say, oh, we didn't have enough Muslims. Because you could even find that those representing Lagos would probably have been Muslims. Okay, General, let's, let's get some of the reactions that we have here. We have some, some tweets here. Um, my, uh, let me start from Femi Adebwemile says that it's most evident that the president basically never believed the abduction. Okay, Public outcry made him wait in Washington <coughs> after three weeks. Another says, Oluwale Ezekiel says, thumbs up for the general. Mr. President needs people like he, you to advise him and that he believes he's not been properly briefed and advised. Uh, who else? Uh, Mary Clary says, discuss with Jimmy Lissou. For the discourse, okay, fine. Now, I, I'd like people to. There's, there's an article in in the in today's Vanguard. Uh, it's written by oh, the name has escaped me. It's written by the gentleman who was one of those who interviewed the president okay. that last week. Okay? okay, it's a beautiful article. If you, if it's too late to get the paper, you can go to the Vanguard web, website. If you can't wait through the Vanguard website, if you go to my own blog, jimmyjitsu.com, the article is there. Now, in that article, he explains. He, he, you know, he had the, the interview with the president last week and then went for dinner with the president with whole hordes of people. And from what he could see, he saw that he was completely surrounded by the worst psychophants you could ever think of. You know, who can, and except throughout the dinner, it was all about praises, 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 praises. So usually, if you have a leader, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'd like, to, I'd like to know your feel on this. Do you think that he has been given the wrong advice or he has been he has been given the right advice and has not been taking it or he hasn't put square pegs in... in, in uh, he hasn't put uh, <laughs> round, round pegs in, in round holes <laughs> for him to... Who, to people who can actually do the job and advise him. No. Where do you think that disconnect is? No, Jimmy, here is this point. Yes. This president will take advice from his military and other Another, advisors yes. around him. Mm. But these many jobless people around us will always say, ah, Mr. President, you are right. Ah, yes, two is yes, five. Yes, I yes. think you are right. Yeah, but the important thing is that the military mm. who told me that they had rescued a hundred, ha, huh, and came and back to say they didn't yes. say so, had not advised him. The, the president correctly. Look, the man is overwhelmed from a uh, stock crash where they now had what was called flea bargain. Flea bargain nipple. And then you went on to uh, uh, somebody buying a, a, a bulletproof car and then a bulletproof pr a plane. And all this, there are so many inquiries going on. We have not, this, oh, this man is overwhelmed. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Boko Haram did not start in his time. He inherited this, and these issues will have been nipped in the board. But what I am saying is that who is president? The president says, look, we, my dear people, uh, security advisors, national security advisor, mm -hmm. we want to finish this job. How do we do it? We have another caller, General. No, wait a minute. They say, well, how do we do it? And they say, well, this is how we will do it. How much do you need? We need 10,000. Mm -hmm. Here is 10,000. Then we came back and say, April was not possible. We're in May. Mm -hmm. It has to be advised. It's not going to go there. You have even been told that it's not Goliath or Diamond or, or <laughs> David or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah? We have a caller. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, the discourse. Good afternoon. Who's calling? Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's with this question? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, your comment very quickly. We are running out of time. Yeah. I'm a serving officer in the army. I just wanted to congratulate the general. I'm also an expert of the Nigerian military school where he went to. Oh, that's good. Yes, I want to congratulate the general and I'll write portions of his book. But I just want to make three points. Yes. My dad has been in service too. He was a serving national officer throughout the Civil War. He died in 1982. I have lived in Barak for a long time. I just want to say things that are going on, sir. Yes. Firstly, there is an undermining of the unity of the officer corps. 
Hmm. He should be down to soldiers. Okay. These divisions are both about ethnic and religious lines. That's the first thing, sir. The second thing is that the proficiency which we put left, which we even, I learned some of it when I was in elementary school and when I was a young soldier in the 80s, it's being whittled down. There is no more respect for merit, seniority, and those very core values of the military. So I think the Nigerian military needs an overall surgical operation, sir. Hmm. Then finally, sir, the issue of the future of the country has been discussed at the national conference. I think more needs to be done. Apart from the position of the ethnic nationalities, the involvement of the youth, the people who are not in charge of the future of this country, has not been taken care of, sir. Yes. Those are my concerns. And I don't know how this thing will be up in 2015. But keep up the good work, sir. And we're hoping to see the elements for additional gains, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Did, did you hear what he said? Oh, okay, he is, he's an officer, he says it's from the officer corps, and he went to the same military school with you, and he says that um, it appears the army has been politicized somewhere along the line, yes. and that has permitted down the ranks, and merit, you know, just general problems that we've had, we've always had with the military, really. And um, so, do you do you believe that uh, there's a need for, think he, he says that there's a need to tinker with the military, and to orientate and retrain them. Okay. That's putting it politely. All right. Yeah, yeah that, that's nice. That's <laughs> nice. That's nice, my brother officer. Thank you, sir. Um, you know, yesterday they showed on the television the uh, paratroopers jumping and so on. American paratroopers are training for Ben in Georgia. Did you see them on television? Hmm. When did you start all this talking to the press? And uh, why would a, a chief of defense have told me that the whole job will finish in April? What appreciation of the situation did they do? To achieve that. Look, people are not patriotic in this country. We're talking about corruption. Corruption is not the problem. The problem is that people are not patriotic and not loyal. Why will it be loyal? For instance, if people like Adekunle is dying in there, nobody yeah. cared about him. And I'm sure all Nigerians have heard of Adekunle oh, during the Civil War. Yeah, all right? Police pension got missing right in this country. And the man was not nabbed by the police. Hmm. There are sick veterans in villages, and they are old. I'm 74. There were so many that were older than myself. I was 27 during the Civil War. And many were 30 and 40 at that time. They are old now. There's no clinic in where they are. Hmm. Uh, they, there is no hospital. What medicine? In fact, I met one that had diabetes. How He couldn't even get his pension. That's, so would be loyal to who? Hmm. Ah. And uh, you say police pension was stolen. This many civil servants have not gotten their pensions. There is a commissioner of police that met me at Kwale, and for four years he hasn't gotten his pension. And the soldiers saw him like a beggar. Beg he was a commissioner of police. So mm. if he starts stealing now, as a commissioner or as a police officer, you want to blame him? So we need to re. Uh, I, I think I agree with that officer. Mm. We need to look into this situation a little bit more seriously. Look, I was talking about how the houses, I think we were lucky here that when they was during the Civil War, which was Hausa versus Igbo, that the Igbos did not surrender to the houses. If they had surrendered to the houses, what you're talking about here would be a different issue. Because the country will be owned by the houses. This is exactly what Bugaje was saying, that the oil belonged to uh, the houses. But that is not true. What we are saying, even in this type of situation, is that the continental shelf, the offshore, should be given, the block offshore should be given to all Nigerians by their state, not an individual. Why do you have to give me, Alabi Isama, an oil block? What, well, how am I better than you, Jimmy, that you didn't get an oil block? So give the oil block to the state from the offshore, and the ones that are onshore belong to the people onshore. Okay. Now let me, let's take a very practical example. You're, you're, you're a retired brigadier general. Yes. You fought how many years in the Civil War? You fought about four or five years. I went War. to Congo as well. You went to Congo. You went to, uh, you did the Bantasina thing. Yes. Now, can you... Point by point, what does your country do for you now, as 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 you are now? What does what oh. what, what benefits do you get? Still? Even uh, even Obasanjo Obasanjo led government published a fake gazette to say that there was a court martial. Was there a court martial? It's in my book. 
And so what, what do you get now from government? I don't get anything. Nothing. I don't get anything from government. And my kids gather together and put money together and pay me every month so I drink and dance. I, that's all I need. I don't want government contract. I don't even want government because appointment. If, if, because if from, from, from the, your book that we saw, yes. if you are sitting down in front of me now and you say that you don't get anything for the government, do you get free medical? Free medical, okay. Well, thank God I've not been sick. Praise the Lord. Everybody. Yeah, <laughs> you know, why I'm saying so is that, the, I mean, we could joke about it now, but if a man of your status is not getting anything from the government, then yeah. we can start seeing... So you want you, me you, to you, come you, back you, again? No, no, no. Oh, want, thank you know, God. You know, we can start seeing, But it's, it's not such a bad idea. Not for him, in fact, mommy, you're cool. But let me, let me, but surely there's a room for bringing people like you back. Not, of course, not to wear the uniform. No, I mean, I, I, as lecturers people. in the staff college and places and to teach the junior ones how things were done or lecture about the civil war or lecture about how medicine was done. Are you done. used for any of that? No, why, why, I won't even go, I won't even attend. That is very, very I'm sad. too busy uh, serving my God and playing with my great-grandchildren. I'm a great-grandfather, you better believe it. I can't believe that. Oh, you better believe it, Jimmy. I mean, I mean so does, does he look like a I saw you eyeing him, you know. Uh, for instance, Jimmy, I, I, when I came back from abroad, I heard that uh, the electrical company mm -hmm. is going to charge you 750 uh, naira per month mm -hmm. if they didn't supply you electricity. Mm -hmm. Well, if they supply for one second, they will still charge you 750. Mm -hmm. Now, here is the point. We have 150 million Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Let's say 10 people live in each house. That's 15 million. Mm -hmm. Let's say, okay, out of these 15 million, 10 million live under the bridge. So we have 5 million. 5 million houses and 5 million people paying 7, 750. That's about 3.5 billion every month, free of charge. Mm -hmm. Who pays this bill? We all have one or two things to do. But what about those who are in the shanties? Eh? You increase uh, fuel, you increase uh, electricity, you increase <laughs> oh, okay. petrol. No, we, have, we have a caller now. The, huh? the lines just you increase up. transport, you increase tax, you increase rent. Hello? Hello? Who's calling? Hello, Hello. good afternoon. The discourse who's calling? Turn down the TV. Turn down your radio set, please. Turn down your, so we can hear you. Well. Yes. Who, who? Yes. Please go on. I am 63 NA1467093. Naraba is my name. A Peter Soldier of the Third Marine Commando. Oh, that's Naraba. Oh, Thank you. Yes. I know her. Hey, you know her? Yes. Okay. Uh, do, you have any, do you have anything to say? Yes. Please turn down your radio, madam. Turn down your radio. I want to say that. Hmm. I am sorry to say that we don't have a military this day. Hmm. Because. No soldier will be training anti-terrorist soldiers to, to, to counter what we have now and be showing it on television. This, and this is an intelligence information. Mm -hmm. I sometimes wrote to a former chief of general staff, Saad, when his chief of army staff was, he said he built uh, an intelligence of this and he showed it on television, opened it with a ceremony. Mm -hmm. It's like we don't have to hear the military uniform these days. No intelligence. Two days ago, I, don't, I, I, I witnessed a sergeant quarreling with a, a, a land corporal. No, no discipline in the army anymore. Mm. But I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Because those who served, people who served, were not uh, compensated and were paid in gratitude. Mm. And there, there's no record. I'm supposed to know that during the Civil War, there were female soldiers. Yes. Who laid down their lives? Hmm. Who fought? But today nobody mentions them. Hmm. We have the commando ladies of Ted Marine Commando, main, not rare. Hmm. My chief of staff is right there. Hmm. There should be a reorganization of the army. Hmm. I think the war and the soldiers living with civilians, among civilians, destroyed the army. And the military government. Most of the officers we have today are not soldiers. They are young graduates who joined the army during the military regime because they thought they could get political appointments, become governors, make mm. money. Mm. So they're not they're not soldiers. You're just, you don't you don't let you have a born soldier. Well, as a soldier, when you hear when you have gunshots, you are happy to you want to go there, you want to see. Our commander 
Thank you very much. Thank God, you. God bless you, and we thank you for what you've done for our nation. Uh, Jenna, you know, you know the lady. Don't well, Lara, um, thank you for this call. Uh, she was with us in the Marine Commando, mm -hmm. and of course, in Obasanjo's book, he said we recruited them for uh, for socials. You have degraded uh, the women of this country. Our leaders have they taken care of them? All these ladies were discharged from Marine Commando with no cover in their hands. Their mm -hmm. mates were drinking and dancing and getting married and having babies. These were serving during the war mm -hmm. and they served loyally. Out of 57 we recruited, 26 died. And we, I have the photographs of these people. Before their parents even allowed them to join the army was something else. Look, this matter we're talking about Dangote is supposed to be the richest man in Africa. Well, let us come back home, the richest in Nigeria. He's from the north. Mm. If he's from the north and his people are the purest, something is wrong, uh, some, something is wrong somewhere. There's a, there's a now, look at most of the, in every town in Nigeria, the beggars are from the north. Why is that so? And many of them are women. It was about two, three years ago, I had you people who were uh, debating in the house that we should marry girls of 13 years old. No, we people, uh, not me. Uh, no, uh, 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 we the people now, no, so they say. No, no, they say okay, we, we the people. people. <laughs> they couldn't even change that word to say the people of Nigeria or something, we the people, what a story. Look, all those women, as you saw them sitting down, Go to my mother's house in Elonia and see the, the women sitting in front of that house who are beggars. At 13 or 12, these men married them, gave them a tear. Their private part and their inos have joined and they're using uh, tampax and they are smelling. So they were divorced. They didn't go to school. They didn't, couldn't read and write. They had no job to do. They can't be house girl or anything. And they are, they, are, they are beggars in the street. And they just die like that. Which hospital is, is this woman going to go to? And people like Obasanjo also told you that we recruited them for, for socials. Mm -hmm. And these people serve this country. And isn't it in the house they say, anybody who agrees say yeah, and if they say nay, in Nigeria of 2015, you are saying nay or that. How do we know who to handle? How do we know uh, our grandchildren will know who to uh, who to quarrel with that mm. caused this problem? Look, I was telling you how the houses of the north came into northern part of Nigeria. Uh, General uh, M. C. Ali, who was former uh, chief of army staff, wrote in his book, "This is, you know." I don't, I'm getting annoyed already, Jimmy, no, 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 no. because what you have, what